Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. Now, God's going to answer the prayer of Solomon in chapter 6. And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night, and this happened in chapter 1, verse 7. This is the second time that God appears unto Solomon. Again, we, I make mention of this many times when I teach. God appeared unto Solomon twice. What that voice was, what that dream is, I don't know. That did not stop Saul. Uh, that did not stop Solomon from his major sin of running to gods, violating scriptures, going back to Egypt, marrying the multiple wives, having the multiple of gold, and getting the horses. Because I have dealt with people who told me right out, if you show me God. I'll change. No, you won't. Israel didn't change. And said unto him, I just can't, I can't imagine what God's voice would be like. Now, Solomon's in chapter 1, and now he's in a dream. But still, I mean, the holy, righteous God's voice would be like a trumpet, the Bible says, like lightning and thunder. You think that would wake you up? <clears throat> and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. Well, that's great. We don't have a God of wood, plastic, stone, or metal that has ears and can't hear. There are religions out there, they pray to dead saints, dead ones. They pray to, to idols, they pray to imagery, they got pictures, they got idols, they got animals. They pray all their prayer in the realm of religion, and they don't hear. <clears throat> God says, I heard thy prayer. In the realm of God hearing prayer, you say, well, I pray to God, and he didn't hear. Yes, he did. He just didn't answer to how quick you want it to be. And that's the realm of God being more patient and having a time that we don't have. Our prayer may not be able to be answered right now according to God's time frame. Your prayer never may be answered. God answered prayer, yes, no, not now. And have chosen this place, Jerusalem, that temple, to myself for a house of sacrifice. <clears throat> so there's a brazen altar. And back in 626, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Dear, will you turn on the news to see what the weathermen said about the weather? They don't know nothing. Solomon prays, Lord, if you shut the heaven that there's no rain, and if we confess our sins, and God replies instantly, right away, I control the weather. Noah. When you build that ark, when you get everybody in that ark, and when you get in that ark and I close that door, I'm going to make it rain. And the whole world never knew what rain was. The Bible says there was a mist. Imagine Noah going out there and preaching, get in the ark, it's going to rain. Ah, you fanatic, what, 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 what is rain? What is this guy talking about rain? And that's today. Get in Jesus Christ, not go to hell. Well, you fanatic, hell, hell. There is no hell. This is hell. <clears throat> and it quite possibility be that some of the weather phenomenons in America is maybe God saying, you got to get back to me. If you don't, it's going to get worse. Some tornadoes, not all. Some uh, famines, some floods, some... Earthquakes, may be God saying, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. Some of it may be the devil, Job chapter 1. And some may be just the earth doing what she does. <clears throat> so if I, <coughs> excuse me, if I shut up heaven, there's no rain. God speaking. Or I commanded locusts to devour the land. God is in charge of animals. He made an ass talk. He made birds feed one of his prophets. He got an ass that never been broken before. You're going to take me into the city. Yes, sir. And 
there's a quite possibility if you got nice crops out there that when the animals come and destroy it, it may be gone. Or, Job chapter 1, it may be the devil. Or, it may be the earth and her animals doing what they do. There's three things. <clears throat> Boy, if I send pestilence among my people, God, I'm a Christian. Why do I have troubles and problems? Israel were God's people. He says, if I send you pestilence, I did it, and you are my people. How's that? Paul writes, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Jesus said, marvel not the world hates you. Oh, I'm a Christian. I'm born again. Why is all these things happening? Israel's God's people, and if I send you pestilence, listen, this world's a veil of tears, you saved or lost. Well, you know, Job says all oh, the people who are wicked, all that, they don't have any troubles, they don't have no problems, they got wealth, they got this and that, but they won't have glory and they won't have the new heavens, the new earth, and new Jerusalem when they die. They'll have the lake of fire. <clears throat> Boy, forgive me. And that land is Palestine. It's not America. His people is not Americans. Don't you apply that to America and say, well, we're God's people. Oh, no, you're not. If my people, the Jews, talking to a Jewish king, which are called by my name, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways repentance sin has brought these judgments why god says you're doing wrong you are sinning what is your reaction to what god has done in the case of your sin you are to humble yourself get rid of that pride you are to start praying. You are to seek God's face. You are to turn from your wicked way. You are to repent. <coughs> you are to pray and seek God. God is not going to lavish in your sins. God hates the sin but loves the sinner. Absolutely not. And when man reacts to God's chastisement, and reacts in a way that, Lord, I am so sorry. Lord, I need your help. God says, okay, I'll step in and help you. <clears throat> now my eyes shall be open. Again, in the realm of religion, how many eyeballs are plastic, metal, wood, stone, seashells, animal eyes? And they don't see nothing. And my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. <clears throat> we already spoke about the ears. What's the difference between Jesus Christ and, re and religion? My God, my Savior can hear me. My Savior, my God can see me. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Your whatever you have can't see you. That's why you love that God. He's not going to chew you out because he can't speak with his mouth. <clears throat> My eyes shall be open and my ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. Boy, forgive me. <clears throat> my eyes shall be open and my ears, I said that incorrectly, attend, not attend. That's attention. That's a word that means attention. And when I did it in the search for tags on this video to happen, my spell check said that word is wrong, but there it is. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever. For right now is the dumb of the rock. There's no house. We'll read that in a moment. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. God has a heart. It used to freak me out when I go to my aunt's house. I go in there, she got Mary on the wall. 
Or was it Jesus? One of the two. I don't. And it had this heart sticking out like that. I mean, to a five-year-old, six-year-old, that was like creepy, Auntie. And underneath it, she had that that Roman Catholic candy, you know, it's like and candles burning. God has a heart. And we talked about the other night with Jesus knowing our afflictions. Jesus has a heart. You know what the priest would tell you? <clears throat> when I grew up in the Catholic, pay me money. I ain't got no more money. Well, tough, sorry. You go to your doctor. Well, you got a copay. I can't afford the copay. Well, sorry. Go to God. I'll take care of you. And as for thee, Solomon, now here we go, con conditional clause which Solomon will fail. If thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and he won't, and do according to all that I command thee, and he won't, and shall observe my statutes, and he won't, and my judgment, he won't, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according to as I covenant with David thy father. When the Mar when the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, that son you're going to have named Jesus shall be on the throne of David, not Solomon. Solomon began to put other gods on that throne. He had a Leo, 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 Leo on his throne, lions. Look how great I am. There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. It, it, there is right now. So God must be a liar. No, nope, there's coming one ruler that will be there forever. The Lord Jesus Christ. King of kings, Lord of lords to the Jewish people. <clears throat> but. Here's a bad but. You got good buts or bad buts in the Bible. This is a bad one. But if he turn away, and he will. And forsake my statutes, and he will. And my commandments, and he will which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods, and he will. God knows exactly what he's doing. Should this not have rained in the ears of Solomon when Honey Pie said, will you build to my God? God said, warn me somewhere along the way. As much as he warned Adam, don't eat that fruit, God has warned Solomon, don't serve other gods, and look how great we are. We do it. And not only serve other gods and worship them, there's a difference. Oh, this statue, it needs clean. Let me clean the statue. Let me wash the statue. Let me dust the statue. Oh, mighty statue. Oh, my, whatever you, whoever you are, mighty statue, please answer my prayer. Servant is attending the statue or the God, and the worship is, I'm going to pray and give you all adoration. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. That land that the United Nations, that all nations fights against, God says, that's my land. And I've given it to the Jew. They are out of the land, have been out of the land, and kind of not there in the land right today because they've sinned against God and have worshipped other gods and have served other gods. And when they receive Jesus Christ as their Messiah, as their Savior, then they will get back in that land. They will have that peace in the land and forever to be in that land. And then they'll get the new earth, a better, a better land grant <clears throat> with no enemies living around them. Now I put them up by roots of my land. Now look how God puts in there that roots. He calls in Isaiah and Jesus calls them a vineyard. I'm just ripping those plants out. When you rip plants out, you, you, you dry up, you die. But he'll graft them in. He's not totally done with Israel, which I have given him. And this house, which I sanctified for my name, I set it apart. Will I cast out of my sight? Why is there no house there today? Why is there no temple? Because they sinned. Because they serve other gods, they worship other gods, they have not done the statutes, they have not done the commandments, they have not done what God told them to do. That's why there's nothing there. <clears throat> you hate those Gentiles? Yeah, we hate those Gentiles. Well, the Gentiles have got their God where, you, where I am supposed to be. 
God is cruel. Jews hate Gentiles, and yet guys look at you don't want Jesus? No, we don't. I'll call some Gentiles in and they'll believe. And then I'll send Gentiles into you to tell you what you need to do with your Jewish Messiah. Peter, go tell Cornelius about me. Not so, Lord. Don't I don't do anything unclean. Don't, don't call him unclean. Jonah, go tell the Ninevites. Oh no, 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 no. <clears throat> and this house which is high, it's three stories on a mountain. There are three levels and it's built on a mountain. That's why I always say when Jesus went up to Jerusalem and people have fought that expression. Jerusalem's a mountain, you have to go up. Shall be an astonishment to everyone saved or lost, I mean Jew or Gentile, that passes by. So that he shall say, what has the Lord, look at that, Lord God, done this unto this land and unto this house? They're going to look, they're going to walk by Jerusalem. Why is everything destroyed? Why is this temple here no longer? Why is this land not occupied by the Jewish people? And here's the answer. G Gentiles are going to say this. It shall be answered. Because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What a terrible testimony to the Gentiles and the Jews, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, has he brought all this evil upon them? Look at what the Gentiles are answering. Now again, look at the word evil, how it's used here. Evil is not the sin. Evil is everything has been destroyed. The house is gone. Why? Because they sinned. They went after other gods. Evil is the consequence of sin. So when the Bible says, the Lord will, if we get to it, God says, I create evil, that's not sin. That's the consequence of sin. If a guy goes out gets intoxicated, steps out in front of a car, he should not have been, gets smacked by that car. The evil is he's in a hospital bed. The hospital bed is not evil. It's not sin. What has happened to him, what has happened because of our sins, that is evil. 